YouTube world, I am back. Thank you for all your lovely comments and well wishes. Whilst I had COVID, I'm much better now. Thank you. Um, I just want to have a bit of fun today, actually. I have a split cup and I have made up some white, uh, some Windsor violet, some PBO uh, violet, 47. That's an opaque paint. I have um, silver, a graduate silver 702, and I have X4 silver, which is quite a warm silver. Now, these colours are. Um, I got the <laughs> I got the idea from the Queen's here in the UK. It's Queen's Jubilee. Um, coming up soon and I'm taking part in a food fest art art and food festival and the theme is the Jubilee so I thought well I'm just going to pour on this little 10 by 10 canvas just a straight pour and see what happens and then I just want to have a bit of fun on an old canvas and I'm probably going to do thin my paints down because these are quite thick at the minute for the straight pour I'm going to thin my paints down and just do a puddle pour <laughs> with some satin enamels over an old canvas and just, I don't know, see where it takes me. So I'm going to do this one first. So my pouring medium today is a little different actually. I just thought I'd chop things up a bit. <laughs> um, I am using uh, PVA one-to-one -one with a squirt of liquid X pouring medium and then water to the correct consistency. My consistency is on the thick side for me. So it leaves a mound on a mound on a mound. It leaves a trail for a good four seconds thick. I don't think I've ever done a pour with it that thick. <laughs> I don't, just I think it's really good sometimes to do things differently to see where it takes you. That's my theory anyway, so it might work, it might not. I know that I need 152 mil to do a 10 by 10 canvas, deep edge canvas. And I'm going to put white. Am I going to put white in? Centre of all three. No. White in the middle. And I'm going to layer up the two purples. And then I'm going to layer up the two silvers.
So I just thin my paint down for the flow extender. And I didn't plan on doing the recurring pour, but straight pour, but then, um, well, I've got a drip in the paint. Typical. I felt a bit shaky actually when I was doing it. Okay. So I haven't painted for over a week actually, well, nearly two weeks, because I, I, I always uh, schedule things in in advance on YouTube. So I'm doing this before I do my next painting, just to literally um, <laughs> warm up. <laughs> just to warm up. Which I hope that makes sense to some people. It makes sense to me anyway. <laughs> So straight away I can see the difference in the violets, one's lighter and one's darker, they might just dry the same. So, I just want to show you something. I very rarely have splitting on this type of pour. And I've had this lying around for years. My daughter gave it to me. Um, she had it at art school. And I thought, I'll just use it up. I'm not using it again. That wouldn't be too difficult to retouch once it's dry. Let's get that torch. So warm up over. This is a really old canvas that I was just practicing on. It's a really good canvas. It's Jackson's. So I'm just I've given it a little bit of a sand over. If it works, it works. We'll see, shall we? Can you see me in frame? I'm going to thin all my paints down a tad.
So I should have thinned my paint down a lot more than what I did. Oh well. If you look at this painting this way round, you've got kind of a cloudy landscape. Um, really cool things happening. But my paint was too, still too thick, even though I'd watered it down. If I was to do it again, I would go a lot thinner. As, as normally I would, actually. But cool. A little bit of a cloudy effect with the satin enamels. and I swiped with a deco art silver. So this is gonna really dry a little bit blingy if it dries okay, because don't forget it's over on an old canvas. So stay tuned for the dried results. What a mess. Okay, I am back with the dried results a few days later. My studio heats up very nicely during the day and it's fantastic for drying paintings. Um, this is the first one. Um, it's going to need a, 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 a coat of varnish to really make it pop. And I'm just going to retouch that little bit there, split. I'm looking back on it and editing the video. I don't know if it was white or not. It might have equally been um, one of the violets, probably the Windsor and Newton, because it's, I've had it for a long, long, long time. Um, or maybe I didn't stir it enough. I don't know. But anyway... That's that one. I'm just going to put that to the side and for another few weeks and give that a varnish. Uh, incidentally, let me show you on varnishing. There are these little sponges, I'll try and find the link to Amazon, but they're brilliant for varnishing. No brush strokes, no nothing. Let me get one that I've varnished. Hold on. Going off tangent here. <laughs> anyway, this has had two coats of varnish. Probably might give it another one. And all I've done is with a, this damp sponge is I've put some Liquitex gloss varnish one way, slowly. Don't rub it all over. Spread it out and then just once over. Round your sides, let it dry. Turn it round, put some more on there, and then I let it dry. By me, let it dry, let it dry 24 hours. Well, I do anyway, and then go the other way and round the sides. Keep it in a sandwich bag, and that will be fine to go next time. So, I have about 10 of these. I don't know what I ordered them for, I don't think it was for varnishing. But they're lovely. Anyway, bossy. So that's that one. Didn't mean to say that. Right, this one. I cannot tell you how long I spent on this, um, but it was about an hour. I don't know if it's going to dry okay. And for those people in the know, if you looked at it closely, you would know it's been done over an old canvas, but it's not cracked. There's a little, little bit of bumpiness here. But my point is, the person buying this painting wouldn't necessarily know that. Because what I'm going to do, first of all, I've got some silver and Payne's grey here. I'm going to mix the two together and I'm just going to darken the base of these clouds. And then... I am going to, I wasn't going to, but I feel that I need to give this context. And it's just me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to silhouette some trees, whether it's silhouette or deep, this deep purple. I don't know. It might be a mixture of the two. So it's like, as if you're looking through the trees at the background.
So there's no way that this is finished yet, but I always get a bit worried with time lapses that you get a bit fed up <laughs> seeing it kind of progress really slowly because the, the base is, is down. But now I really need to go in and do all more leaf work to really pad and fill this out. And even on a time lapse and, and down here, put a horizon in. Even on a time lapse, you're not you're not really going to see much of what's going on. And to save my phone battery, I, I've kind of given you a flavour of, of what I'm doing. Um, I probably will put some darks. I should say darks. <laughs> it is dark. Probably mid-tones um, and some highlights, maybe. Um, but still keep it as a silhouette so that your eye is drawn through the trees. But I kind of feel that it's been given a bit... Oh, been given a bit of context now so i will crack on and i'll show you the results in a sec here we have the end results um i've been so busy with an open studio that i haven't really given this the attention that I probably wanted to give it but i did end up doing quite a lot of work on it in the end um i used so the first the first layer of black down was just a graduate acrylic black so it's not wasn't black black and then I worked over the top with a little bit of um, purple um, but desaturated purple with a little bit of orange come on focus there you go with some leaves so it looks as if they're really kind of knocked back and then um there's loads of i don't know if you could see i'll just go around to an angle there's absolutely loads of leaf detail but very very subtle so i use golden black over the top and that really created um some lovely deep deep tones and then over the top of that, just to highlight, some silver mixed with black. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> I just have a good time, you know, for a, for a canvas that was stuck up the loft that wasn't going to be used again. I'm quite pleased. Thanks for watching.